This is Lenny from Aquatic Apes. Lenny decided to quit his job in New York City and fly halfway across the world to Indonesia to become a freediving instructor. Lenny has become a wildly popular spearfishing YouTuber since then and shoots some massive fish. Another YouTuber you probably know, Captain Jack Spiro, asked me if I wanted to join him on a trip to the Bahamas with Lenny from Aquatic Apes. The answer was obviously yes. As the trip got closer, the weather looked worse and worse, so we decided we needed to go with plan B. We were going to take our 28 contender to the Marquesas. The Marquesas are a small, isolated group of islands west of Key West. The Marquesas are far away from the mainland, which means that this area of reef doesn't get much fishing pressure, resulting in more and bigger fish. We checked the weather, and the forecast for this area was much better than the Bahamas. Of course, the weatherman isn't always right. Since going to the Marquesas was my idea, I wanted to make sure that these guys got on some nice fish. Especially Lenny, who had never dove in the United States before. Our main goal for this trip was to get Lenny on a nice black grouper. Probably the most coveted and tastiest reef fish we have down here. Fortunately, Jack and Lenny can probably shoot fish in a desert, so it didn't take too long for the first fish to hit the deck. This is the very first dive of the trip. Jack is making a drop on a ledge that we know rolls from about 60 feet of water to 80 feet of water. The water clarity isn't great here, which can actually be to your advantage if you're trying to sneak up on fish close to the bottom. Fortunately for Jack, he lands right on this pair of nice mutton snapper. He lines up on the bigger of the two, extends his arm, and pulls the trigger. Jack gets a perfect stone shot and is able to bring this fish straight up to the surface. This is what we came out here for. Woo! Hell yeah. First drop. Roll them. First drop. On the very next dive, my brother Justin went down and shot an even bigger mutton snapper. He didn't get the shot on camera though, so it doesn't really count. Nice, dude. After diving the 60 to 80 foot stuff for a while, we wanted to come in shallower and check a few caves that we know hold black grouper. That fish that just shot back up into this cave was exactly what we were looking for. We are each allowed one black grouper, and I wanted to get mine in the boat first. I swam up to take a look in the cave with my underwater light, but can't quite see him. This grouper tried to get out of the cave and shot out behind me, and I was able to spin my gun around just in time to get a quick shot off. I wasn't in a huge rush to grab this fish, and I was a little bit low on air, so I decided to come up, catch my breath, and come back down for an extraction. I came up to the surface and caught my breath. Each second you leave a wounded fish on the bottom is another opportunity for a shark to come in and steal your fish, so I didn't take as long as I should have with my breathe up. Fortunately, the fish was not very tangled and I was able to get my hands on the fish and bring it to the surface with no problems. Black grouper are probably the number one fish we target on these trips down to the Marquesas, so it was good to get the first one in the boat. Not the best shot, but good first one. At this point, Lenny was the only person who hadn't gotten a nice fish in the boat. What you have to understand is that Lenny is used to seeing fish from Indonesia, not South Florida. Not only did Lenny have to identify a fish he has never seen before, but he also had to determine if it was big enough to shoot. Lenny turns to see Jack's approval before shooting these mangrove snapper. Unfortunately, by the time he gets positioned to take a shot, the nicer fish had swam away, and the only thing left were these smaller fish. This fish was just barely legal, so we knew we had to give him a little bit more coaching before his next fish. This time of year, there are literally thousands of mangrove snapper on these reefs, so it didn't take long for Lenny to get on a nice one. As you can see here, he's laying on the bottom, waiting for the fish to come to him, extends that gun, and gets a perfect shot on this nice mangrove snapper. There are just thousands of these fish, and Justin lines up on a nice one and pulls the trigger. Jack also got to take his pick of the nicest fish of the school, extended that arm and squeezed the trigger and got another nice fish in the boat. We could have easily shot our entire limit of mangrove snapper at this spot, but after shooting one each, we decided it was time to find some of our other target species. Black grouper are our number one target on this trip, and Jack is lining up on a nice sized one. He hits the fish, but it must have only gotten skin because the grouper was able to tear out and get into the massive cave nearby. Jack came up, reloaded his gun, and prepped for a follow-up dive. When grouper are in these large cave systems, you absolutely need a good underwater light. Jack lines up on the fish, but has some sort of gun malfunction and isn't able to get a good shot. 
Shortly after this, Lenny took a dive to try to find that grouper that Jack had shot. Justin's also here on the bottom, checking in another part of the ledge. And next thing you know, this massive school of yellow jack comes by. And Lenny isn't quite sure if these are legal to shoot, but doesn't think about it too long and gets a perfect shot on this fish. Not quite in the head, but happens to get that spine and basically nerves this fish so that it was real easy to bring him into the boat. This is Justin's view. He's looking in this ledge for that same black grouper, and if you listen carefully, you can hear me grunting behind him trying to get his attention. <laughs> Justin looks up and sees this school of yellow jack and doesn't waste any time before putting a great shot in one. Around this time, Jack was on a dive when this nice school of cereal mackerel comes in. He sticks his gun out and gets a real nice shot through the fish, and this actually ends up being sushi by the end of the night, so stay tuned to see how that turns out. He wanted sushi, right? Jack was determined to find the black grouper that he had lost earlier in the day, and checked this deep cave not too far from where he had originally shot the fish. That large fish there is a jewfish, which is illegal to shoot, but back behind it you can just see the backside of a black grouper. Jack knows that he only has one shot at stoning this fish, so he takes his time to line up a perfect shot. It looks like he got the stone shot here, but the fish is still really far back up in this cave, and it takes us quite a few dives over the next 20 to 30 minutes to work him out. After a lot of team diving, we finally got the grouper out of the cave, but it was much smaller than we had originally thought. I still think that the bigger grouper is out there, much smarter than he was before and with a few new battle scars. This grouper is the perfect eating size and we actually cook it up for dinner later in the video. And yeah, I ended up diving and thinking I saw the same grouper because I saw just his tail and I was like, that's gotta be him. And I was like, and I don't want to leave a wounded fish. So I shot him and realized it was a different fish. Smaller, but still a good fish. That other one was just way bigger. We decided to try to look for a new spot on the 60 to 80 foot drop off, so we headed out and kept an eye on the depth finder. We came across a spot that had a ton of life, and as soon as we jumped in there was a massive bait ball of yellowtail and blue runners and other bait fish. This was a great sign, and Justin took the first dive. The water was much dirtier out here, and we could not see the bottom from the surface, so we had to make blind drops. As the bottom slowly came into view, Justin saw this nice black grouper that was sitting under the bait. While sinking down to the bottom, Justin slowly extended his gun and pulled the trigger. Fortunately, the grouper couldn't get into any of the bottom structure, and Justin was able to bring up the grouper in a single dive. This was a killer spot, and Lenny made the next dive. As Lenny dove to the bottom, there were a handful of nice-sized mangrove snapper around. Fortunately, Lenny held out, and this nice mutton snapper came in. I grunted to get Lenny's attention, and he was able to get eyes on the fish. <laughs> Without hesitation, Lenny took a long shot on the mutton and rolled it with a shot to the head. Mutton snapper are typically regarded as a challenge to shoot, and Lenny just stoned the first one he ever even shot at. It's absolutely incredible to me that Lenny had never seen any of these fish before, but was able to get perfect nerve or stone shots on just about every fish he shot. We made a handful of other dives and saw some other nice fish that we couldn't quite get a shot on. However, at this point, the main goal was to get Lenny on his first black grouper. Lenny and Jack took a dive together, and Jack spots this nice-sized black grouper. He starts making noise to get Lenny's attention. Unfortunately, by the time Lenny turns around, the grouper is already gone. Jack could have easily shot this fish, but had already got his grouper for the day. Unfortunately, sometimes it just doesn't work out. After a while, we decided to call it a night. The wind had completely died, and the sun was getting pretty low in the sky, so we decided to anchor up on the reef instead of running all the way back to the islands for protection. I personally hate catching cooks, but I have to talk about what we ate for dinner for a second. We started out by filleting the smallest grouper and half of the mackerel. We chopped up some of the grouper and threw it in a bowl of ceviche that Justin had prepared before the trip. Next, Justin made mackerel nigiri with sushi rice that we brought from home. 
Grab one. It was about this time that the drag on one of our flat lines oh, started screaming. Right. Lenny had That's never good. been fishing before, so he wanted to cross that one off the list too. Lift the rod, lift the rod and reel down, reel down. Oh. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no, he's there a natural. Go. Drop the rod, oh, so that you can reel. It's a cobia. It's a cobia. Yeah. Is it cobia? I don't know. I would take yeah, that for Yeah, that's a cobia for right? sure. Yeah, that's oh, a cool little cobia. Oh, my God. Uh, of all the things we could have caught on this patch reef, a cobia was not my first yeah, guess. Yeah, right. I'll mess you up. Yeah. Turn, get in the sun. There we go. Hey. All right, let's <laughs> make it. Slimy, slimy. Watch after releasing the fish, we fired up the grill for the main course. Justin took the grouper fillets and placed them in aluminum foil with butter, lemon, and a bit of salt water because we forgot our seasonings. We then wrapped up the fillets and threw them on the grill to steam cook. We also caramelized some onions in the aluminum foil. When the fish was done, we took large flour tortillas, added sushi rice, spinach, caramelized onions, and steamed grouper, topped with some homemade Mexican white sauce that Justin had mixed up the night before. We then rolled up the burritos, sat back, and watched the sunset, eager for a good night's sleep. Not that we were going to get any. Get up to some gnarly weather. Anyway? Like four foot rollers coming in over the bow. Not nice wake up call. Yeah, a little, little nice wake up call. Can't see anything. Huge squall came through. Woo! Like catch out here. You alright? Be real careful with that line. Don't get it around your leg or anything. Yeah. The anchor was stuck on a rock and we could not get it loose. The wind was whipping the boat around and we needed to get out of there. So we decided to just cut the anchor line and grab it the next day. Okay, cut it. We'll get it in the morning. Push hard. I did. After a sleepless night, we woke up to the rising sun and chirping birds from the island we should have anchored behind the night before. Let's just say we learned our lesson. We weren't quite ready to head home though, and we still wanted to get Lenny on his first black grouper. We headed back out to the spot that we had seen so much life at the day before, and we all hopped in. The current was much stronger, so we decided to dive in pairs of two to keep an eye on each other. Lenny dove down, and the water was still pretty murky, so he couldn't see the bottom until he was pretty close to it. Fortunately, he managed to drop right on two black grouper. You can see this bigger black grouper was heading away, when Jack gets Lenny's attention and points to the grouper right under him. While this fish was smaller, it was still a good fish and Lenny lined up a shot and took it. Unfortunately, he didn't get a stone shot this time and the grouper was able to get wrapped up in the bottom. We were in about 80 feet of water here. Lenny hung onto the shooting line so that we could see where the grouper was hung up. We struggled to stay over the fish and catch our breath, but after a bit, Justin was able to dive and headed down to free the fish. Normally, when you leave an injured fish on the bottom in conditions like this, the sharks start to show up for a quick meal. We were lucky and didn't see any on this dive and were able to get the grouper up to the surface without any trouble. Lenny was able to brain and bleed his first black grouper, and we knew it was a successful trip. So yesterday, same spot, went down here, and um, I was too in the zone on the free fall and I wasn't really looking around, and apparently I almost landed on top of a big one. and. Uh, uh, by the time I saw it, by the time Jack pointed it out to me, it was uh, just a cloud of sand as it bolted off. And um, yeah, so today, went to the same spot and got this one, not quite as big. We went down, there was two of them, one bit bigger, but further away. But um, still the biggest one I've ever caught, and the only one. Super pumped. That grouper, baby. That's Thanks for putting me on it, guys. Awesome. Yeah. It was still very early in the day, and we probably could have kept diving, but at this point we had plenty of fish for everyone to go home with, so we decided to get a head start on the long drive home. 
We pulled our fish out of the cooler for a quick picture and snacked on some fresh grouper ceviche before running back to Key West. We had a great time with Jack and Lenny and look forward to more trips with them in the future. For more videos like this, feel free to like and subscribe. Till next time.